Okay, morning everybody. Good day, good day. You had a good week? <laughs> yeah, not too bad, obviously. Um, no feel for everyone back home with all the sad news for the Queen and that, which is pretty, pretty, pretty sad. Yeah, yeah, I was, uh, I was in a call yesterday when I saw the news come in. Jane came through and told me, and it was like, oh, man. Mm. Start sit back and think about. Uh, she's been, she was on the throne, forty years before I was around. <laughs> she's been there my whole life. It's quite strange. Yeah, and mine. Well, all of ours. Yeah. Mm. And uh, in my previous experience of that, I think was uh, where a big public figure died, or yeah, certainly. Would, when Margaret Thatcher left power, I was like, oh, so what happens now? That's a bit oddity. Then she kind of disappeared until she was out the way, out of the picture. But, um, you know, because my formative years, she was one in power all the time, alongside the Queen. And, um, yeah. Yeah, with the Queen showing her face, you know, it was a regular in our family, was watching the Queen's speech. And <laughs> my granddad was a huge, uh, fan of the Queen. So it was a, uh, yeah, it's pretty momentous. But she did live mm -hmm. an incredible life, so did a lot of, uh, yes. A lot of, uh, well, a lot of service in all those years. Exactly. Incredible. My grand yeah, exactly. was, my grand was born in the same year as the Queen. So, but she died in 2019. The Queen did an extra three years, but, um, I always used to, you know, a uh, big influence in my grand's life with the colonial of things, you know, moving out to Rhodesia and being all part of that. Um, but yeah, it's it's so sad, isn't it? But at the same time, she is old, and it's funny how you can be shocked even when you know something's coming. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know. Go on Twitter, and she. Well, yeah, that really is incredible. Huh. And yeah, she, I, I feel like she was a, a big stabilizing force. Um, um, uh, we'll see what, what happens from now, but uh, I don't think it's going to add to world stability, that's for sure. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Was... Yeah, yeah. She was a very stabilizing force, very measured, never said anything wrong, it seemed. <laughs> and with a very entertaining husband. <laughs> uh Cool. Okay. Well, um, I no, there was no Luca this morning, was there? So I thought I. Yeah, you did. Oh, good. <laughs> so I thought I'd uh, pull in some uh, general new general activity from in and around the um, the uh, crypto Cardano space. Um. Mm. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Yes, very early, very early. So, um, yeah, yeah, tokens can have all, all kinds of abilities, um, and the sort of general, um, course that people seem to take when they're launching a token is to call it a governance token because that's the one that's under least scrutiny from the sec or um, financial conduct body so they they call them governance tokens and they're given some kind of voting power in decision making for uh, the, the uh, project or or DAO that they're connected to um, so with the do your own research um, project uh, they have the team behind them called scat dow um security uh can't remember i guess cardanif i'm not sure it doesn't sound quite right but security audit token um and they do lots of auditing of projects in and around uh cardano just trying to pull up the um pull out the ones that are sketchy dodgy um rug pulls take note of them give them some kind of evaluation and pass them on so their discord server i've only touched briefly but they hold a lot of the audits that they've done on there um, and i imagine they'll have some kind of voting mechanism for their token through that um, saying that all these governance tokens uh, do have some utility and they do end up having some value um, how quickly that happens and how far it's how hard it's pushed how far it goes um, go depends token to token so if you wanted to just to see if any of these tokens you've collected have any actual value yet. A good place to do it is on the um, um, uh, the min swap decks, muesli swap. So they're the ones that tend to have the most um, most worth. Am I screen sharing it? I'm not. Let me jump onto screen sharing. Um, the DYR tool is free to date. Yeah, it's one of the, you know, one of the remarkable things about Catalyst is that the whole environment is encouraging people to uh, be funded, to build a tool that they think is useful for the community, and to open source it. So um, even if you build a sort of private commercial product off the back of it, um, typically there's a, a large portion of your code that's distributed open source. Um, or is just a community tool that can be used by anybody and everybody. And so in this case, the um, the tool is free, open source, and you can jump in and play with it um, uh, with no fees to get fee attached, which is very cool. Um, the uh, project, uh, maybe they're under the SCAPDAO domain. Oh yes, mm -hmm. and the the team behind it, uh, I think I don't know how uh, how many technical audits or how far into the technical audit side of things they go, but um, certainly the just the evaluating of um, of apps is there already, and I imagine within the DAO they'll attract some actual quirk code auditors who can then look at the um, the smart contracts that we'll all be using um, on these platforms just to check they are robust. And that's one of the things that's uh, most needed in the space um, and most sort of admired, particularly within the um, the Cardano smart contract world is um, you know, w which audits have been done by whom and, you know, how trusted is the code that's coming out. And so there's a tool that's coming out soon that's, um, that's very cool and I want to share with you uh, as a potential money making um, tool and in the this team haven't done any auditing on it, but um, the um, the project behind it has paid for uh, an external agency to come and audit their code, 
and this agency are ones that have done several different large scale projects across um all of crypto so not just within cardano even um uh, they specialize in cardano um plutus haskell smart contract auditing so there's you know there's different levels of audit even that you can have done on your projects um and the the best ones will have the the most robust code is the is the expectation uh, so this is a Skepto uh, website, if you see my screen share. Um, you'll get sort of ideas of what the project does from a um, page like this. This is a value proposition and talks about the token and what its utility is going to be. Um, and it, yeah, essentially they, this one's called a governance token they'll be using to vote on uh, proposals that are coming through and um and on audits are coming through so yeah in terms of holding it you don't need to do anything uh you've got access to the tool so um the discord server in particular is going to be improving over time um i did show this last week i think didn't i pull a bit um too many discord servers it's almost impossible to find anything these days <laughs> uh, let me try Come on. see my screen okay the fairly small perhaps but um so you seen discord or you seen just the uh, let's try Not sure if I'm going to be able to share. It's just going to be a screen at a time, looks like it. Okay. <laughs> Jumped into the portal down the rabbit hole. And off to scat down. Um, so this Discord server um, is the one where it's got the outcomes of the people who've used the research tool. Um, so you can see here under report library, you've got all these different projects um, that have been, uh, had audits done by the team or by the community. Um, so you find one that you're looking at maybe uh, getting hold of their token or uh, buying uh, into the project then you can come and see, come and check out what it's like. So like, the audit token or the jumped in user tool. Sorry, your audio keeps dropping out for me again. Okay, cool. You made use of it yet. Yeah, your audio is clipping and, and dropping. Sorry, Paul. Maybe, yeah. Still very quiet. But... Are you hearing him okay, uh, Robin? Ah. Okay. Um. Uh, 
Um, I'll give it a sec while Robin jumps back in again. Is that any better, Robin? Okay, cool. Uh, so this uh, this is the uh, sort of report card for the Cornucopias project. Um, 64.29, which you think, mm, okay, well, someone's got a low opinion of it. Um, but that's not actually too bad a score. And it just comes down to uh, diff very different factors about you know, how mature it is, how far along they are, and all sorts of things. And then the deeper report um, shows you a bit more detail. So the tool outputs um, this sort of content, which is all standardized and formatted. So you get a nice idea of, uh, or uh, yeah, you learn how to read the reports more quickly as you go through projects. Um, a bit about token economics, um, how much is uh, private, how much is team owned, etc. cetera. Uh, the activity that they're putting out on social networks is all useful information, depends on how live or dead the project is. Um, and then tells you what the auditor has done um, in terms of research. Do they read the white paper? Yes. And and then the, have they got access to public details about the team behind it? And yes. And so they'll clip this information. And this then is a very good way of, if you're looking at token, just run through this doc, these documents, get an impression of... Um, what someone else who's done the research has found. And then if there's something you want to nail down on, you can just um, use this as a sort of jumping off point to do your own. Um, you can also then use a, use a research tool to, to work from. Um, let's switch again. The, the uh, audit tokens. Mm. Yeah, I haven't seen their actual um, tokenomics, but they're certainly being generous with with what they're giving away. They are classing them as a premium token on Tosi Drop, so you pay half an ADA to the team to you to get hold of their token. Um, so they are using it as a bit of a fundraiser initially as well. Um, but I think that's important for any project if you if you don't have a way of growing, uh, of making money, then you're not going to be around for long. So you can't rely on catalyst funding repeatedly forever. Um, hmm. Yeah, yeah, very much so. Um, and even the ones we're picking up for free on on uh, Toasty Drop, it's a hundred a time, and it seems to be recurring per epoch. So yeah, very very good. Um, now, if I go back to uh, this one, then. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So 
So yeah. Yeah, I mean the um, the beautiful thing is it uh, once there's a native token on the chain, um, you can do the stuff that the team and the project wants you to do with it. So that can be all uh, voting on projects within their um, their sort of the governance of their DAO, um, but also uh, there's a whole ecosystem out there that are willing to. That there are tools that are you can use their token to see if you can get some value out of. So. I'm just jumping over to min swap decks, um, the decentralized exchange. We can search on here to see if anybody has actually put the token, the audit token, up onto, um, you know, onto here. All right. I can't hear it. <laughs> I have I have got what sounds like a little mosquito every now and then. But <laughs> oh, I'm not sure. Um um yeah, so you can look on on the exchanges to see if anybody's actually listed the token on here as um, being able to swap for others. And now I don't think the audit token was on here. Um, oh, I really can't hear you, Paul. Uh, I got, it's got, I got sort of, there's something about one of the tokens and then the other, but <laughs> I, can, I can't make you out. It's really bad. Sorry. Um, so here on MinSwap Dex, you can see that somebody's actually provided some liquidity. So you could actually exchange your um, audit tokens for ADA and vice versa. Um, I'm not, so for one ADA, you can get 106 audit tokens. So if you wanted to accumulate a whole load more, you can go and buy a load more. Um, but also, you know, with it, with decentralized exchanges, if you have access to a load of tokens, so if somehow you've got airdrop 10,000 audit tokens, you could then provide your own liquidity pool um, on the exchanges where you are actually then earning fees off, off the back of people exchanging the tokens between them. Um, so you're providing the services of a bank for for these tools, these tokens, um, which is yeah additional value you could you could do just now. Um, I don't join in on any of that, um, particularly at the moment, um, but no doubt I'll get into it as I immerse myself deeper into DeFi and um, get braver. Um, but these are the sorts of things that are possible with even the audit tokens, which we're getting for free at the moment. Um, so the other, sorry, go on. Uh, it's a little better. Yeah. It's still very quiet. Oh, no, she does actually sound a lot clearer. Um, maybe it's just my, yeah, just my in-ear volume is low for some reason. Uh, I was fiddling with my audio. I don't know whether it's me, but um, if it's quite for Robin as well, then I guess not. So the other um, project I wanted to look at today was um, there's a few sort of dates that are coming up that have got um, activity on pre projects I've previously spoken about or or mentioned. Um, and one of the ones is the uh, A Ada. Um, platform and the AADA token. So they are a, uh, a DeFi uh, lending and borrowing platform that's coming out. So a bit like uh, Mel's talked about right at the beginning, they were all gung-ho and going to be blitzing the Cardano space with their tech um, 
they haven't actually produced much yet on uh, Cardano. I think they're finding it harder to develop than they thought. Um, but other teams have pressed ahead. And so AADA is one of the teams that come out earliest with um, a working um, borrowing lending platform on Testnet. And the launch date's been released for their mainnet, which is going to be the 13th of September. So um, in only a few days, we'll actually have full-blown lending and borrowing on Cardano, which is quite cool. And the sort of success of these, you know, the same exact functionality, but on Ethereum has resulted in, or on other, other chains has resulted in projects like uh, Aave and Compound. And so you can look on CoinMarketCap for the value that's built up in those, in those respective projects tokens and potentially draw out a line, a, a parallel with what might end up happening with the AADA token. Um, so let me just get up the date. So we're looking at the yeah the 13th of September. The DAP is going to launch on um, mainnet. And I've been playing with their testnet DAP just so we could get an idea of it. So am I sharing correctly? Cool. Um, so this is all tied in with um, a DAP connector. And let me just disconnect to start with. Um, so the, the concept behind it is that anybody can take any of the assets that they own. Um, so it, it could even be your audit token. Um, and you can uh, put up an offer to borrow against th that token. Um, or uh, if you want to get hold of a load of some of these tokens, you could borrow um, some if you've got a particular use case. Uh, so the the way that it works is uh, quite cool. I'll just jump into my um, Eternal wallet and um, show you. You can switch Eternal into um, the various different test nets and, and that are available on Cardano. So the, this is the main net, which is the one that all the real value activity happens on. Then we've got a pre-production test net, a preview test net, and there's some other community driven ones. Um, uh, the Guild Network is a particular set of tools useful for stake pool operators. Um, the pre-production one is the one that um, is officially supported by the AA, the platform's um, production. You can uh, get hold of some test net ADA um, and have that sent through to your wallet. Um, and the the balance then is is real in terms of it's on test net, it's in your wallet but it's actually just test data, so you can't spend it anywhere other than on the testnet um, platforms. Saying that, it's got uh, all the same features as a main, so you can switch on a DAP connector, um, which is this green button here, uh, for a particular wallet, if you've got multiple wallets in internal, and then over into the AADA app, you can um, connect your wallet, And once you have connected, it will show you all the loans that are available on here already. So there's one to um, someone's willing to lend you one and a half thousand meld. Um, the security they've placed on it so that if if they can't pay off the the loan in time in the period, then you get given or the, the collateral tra collateral that they've put into the platform. Um, they can't redeem. They can't get it back. And the interest they're offering on that. One and a half thousand is three point two eight ADA um, over the term. And it's active for twenty days. Um, so to get sort of an idea on how that relates to you, you could either um, borrow this or you could put up your own equivalent. So uh, the the um, platform offers ways to get started. So you can access the testnet for set from here. Um, so in fact, if I wanted to send some ADA to my eternal wallet, I can go into my wallet, grab a receive address, uh, go to the faucet. Um, I want to present some pre-production testnet ADA. I'm not a robot. And that will issue that transaction um, that's transaction hash 
and you can do that daily to get more ADA. And then back in your um, wallet, this will um, update after a few minutes with the new balance. So you can see um, the transaction show up on here. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so, so you switch between test nets and main net um, with this little purple button in the bottom right corner. Um, click that and then you can jump to the test nets. And once you're on a test net, you can play to your heart's content and you won't risk any losing any of your real money. <laughs> Real tokens. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. So you can see I've just received another ten thousand. It went from. 8496 up to 18,496. And um, because I, I requested some money from the testnet faucet, testnet tap. Um, so that's sending me more test data. So they don't mind giving you 10,000 a day. And if you ever come across a deal like that, you know it's not real money. <laughs> um, so it's purely to let people test out their applications in advance of um, launch. And it's also a good way for you to learn and play with some of these tools um, without actually risking any any real stuff yet. So we've got our wallet set up. And the other thing you might to do when connecting to uh, any application, either on mainnet or on testnet, is um, switching the collateral on when you're going to be interacting with an exchange or with um, a platform like a lending platform like AADA. So you come here to the settings for that particular wallet and then you switch on the collateral. And uh, initially it will ask you to do a five ADA transaction. And so effectively you're reserving five ADA in your wallet to, uh, to safeguard any failed transactions that happen. So that collateral may get used up um, by um, the application you're interacting with, but it's limited to that. So the most you can lose is five ADA. Um, but if you're using the application to make more money, then that's a risk that you you sort of just have to concede. Um, but it's a small, it's always a, it's a tiny amount really in terms of um, the scheme of things with with the value you might get from these platforms. So I've got my collateral on. I've made this wallet my DAP connector wallet. Um, I've got the green plugin. I can jump over to the app again and carry on through this. So. Uh, I've funded my wallet, I've, I've, I created a wallet in Eternal, I funded it from the faucet, I've connected to the website already, so it can so that the application now can see the balance of all the tokens in my wallet, so that's something you have to be aware of. Um, the, the application can't do anything with what's in your wallet until you sign a transaction, but be aware that when you do sign a transaction, you are giving the application the right to um, do something within your wallet that could be spending some of the tokens or uh, just um, um, uh, say taking an NFT or putting an NFT into the wallet. All these sorts of things are, well, you can do that without signing, but um, all these things are possible. So you do have to really trust the application you're interacting with um, uh, to a large degree um, before you just you know launch into and so this um, AADA team are incentivizing uh, their launch on mainnet, getting people to interact um, by asking them to um, get involved in that first 21 days by risking some of their um, assets, put them up for loan or borrowing, um, and in return for uh, being an early adopter, using their app for the first time, in those, in those 21 days, they will airdrop you some of their AADA tokens. So the uh, 
the incentive is there. Again, it's all uh, about risk reward. I wouldn't put a whole load of money into it, <laughs> um, but something you're willing to lose, treat it a bit like gambling money. Um, because it's new code, it's it's well, very well tested and audited. But um, again, it's new, and until you know, we know what this space is like. We've seen it in in other chains um, rather than Cardano so much. But uh, anything and anything built by a human can have a flaw, <laughs> so um, it is worth being cautious. Saying that, no risk, no reward. Um, so they give you some options here to test, to mint some test tokens as well. So this will send you some NFTs and some um, FTs, some fungible tokens into your account. Um, and so I've been given some AADA LQ tokens, some AADA MIN tokens, some AADA ADA tokens. <laughs> um, and they're all, so these ones prefixed with a, with a lowercase A are ones that um, this app has, has sent to me. And I can use those to interact with the app. But on mainnet, this will all be legitimate real tokens that you could, you could be using. Um, and I, I do, you know, I used the testnet, force it to send me some a ADA tokens, just straight ADA. And that's equivalent to the mainnet ADA tokens as well. Um, but of course, they're testnet tokens, so you can't spend them outside of the testnet. Uh, then once you've gone through these one, two, three steps, you'll get the fourth and you can then proceed to the marketplace and... Um, I haven't created any loan requests yet, but let's do that as an as an example. So I can. Uh, so I'm running on the pre-production network. Uh, I'm just going to disconnect and reconnect because that button's not working for me. And I've been in and turned the collateral off on my wallet in the meantime. So. Again, with anything tech related, if it's not working, try turning it off, turning it on again. <laughs> Sometimes that's worked. So there, it's pulled in the loans that are offered at the moment, and I can create create one myself. So, um, if you're going to be a lender, you could say, "I'm willing to lend some of my um, LQ tokens." And I'm going to lend uh, 10 of those, um, which is approximately 125 ADA. Am I going to do a bit more? Might do a bit more. Let's go for 50. So someone can get hold of 626 ADA um, from ADA's worth of LQ tokens from me. Um, and so anybody that takes up this deal, um, I will receive. Um, 50 LQ tokens um, that I can then make use of. So an example might be if you know that there's a, a particular promotion coming up where getting hold of something will be useful to you, whether it's a um, an early launch of a yield farming or liquidity pool um, proposition where the rates of returns will be in the thousands of percent for the first couple of days. And you say, okay, if I just take, if I borrow just a hundred of this new token, provide some liquidity, then I'll scoop up all the early interest in that token. And with the liquidity pool, earn that massive amount of interest. And then I can redeem the loan and get out of it and I just take the proceeds. Um, and that's a way, a technique, a strategy for earning um, um, with borrowed money. Uh, <laughs> in this space and that's just you know that's the sort of thing that the banks would be doing with with real funds in the fiat world not giving you access to it that we can now do for each other in a peer-to-peer -peer way on these sorts of platforms so uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah exactly so you you set the terms of the the loan that you're willing to take on or to provide um, and that can include how long it's up for um what happens if um the loan gets defaulted on so the time expires um all these things are parameters that you can have control of uh, which is very very powerful so the term of my loan i'm going to give it for just seven days um or i only want to borrow for seven days um zero hours the interest that i'm um 
willing to offer is going to be in let's say ada um and it gives you a recommended um, figure here that you can play with so uh, if i did a point four zero point four six percent um sorry zero point four six ada return um, for over that seven days and um, that equates to a 3.83 percent apy over the year um so you know i'm not risking uh, a lawful lot if someone's only going to get 0.46 ADA um, for lending me their LQ tokens but um, you could maybe say okay that's just unrealistic I'm gonna I'm happy to give you 10 ADA because I know I'm gonna get a thousand percent return on my liquidity pool that I'm, I'm gonna be running um, and that'll be make it a bit more attractive to someone because someone's gonna effectively lend you 10 LQ tokens and get 10 ADA for it and they'll get their LQ back as well so they'll make money and if you've done your job right, you'll make money. And that's how this, this ecosystem will work. So the collateral is um, sort of what will get lost if the loan is defaulted on. So I'm going to give up, uh, say, 100 ADA if uh, if I can't uh, pay back you pay back your LQ tokens. Um, and you can set a date for when this will expire. So we said seven days, so let's do it for the 16th. Or, uh, so I know my opportunity is only good for, um, so the so the project launched, the LQ, the liquidity pools are launching um, on the 13th. So I have to have borrowed this ADA by then. Um, otherwise it's no good to me. And so maybe by the 14th. And so that's the date that you'd set. And uh, I say for midday. Is this all making sense? Jump in with any questions as I'm moving through. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. So, um, so this this is all stuff that you can do now and not risk anything. But then after the thirteenth, you might say, "Well, I got really comfortable with playing with it here." I am. Um, I'm going to jump in. I want. To, I want to get hold of some of those um, airdropped ADA token, a ADA tokens. Um, and so I'm going to put some put a loan up and see if anybody takes it. And it might be that say, okay, we'll do a deal. Paul, I'll loan you some of my um, LQ tokens. You can borrow them, and, uh, and and you know we know each other. We trust each other. You can pay me back. I'll pay. I'll pay you back. And um, we've both participated. For that in that first 21 day period um we've loaned each other borrowed money but we've got no plans to do anything with it we're just going to get it back uh, whoever lends it will get a bit of interest um <laughs> and whoever borrows it will just have lost a bit of it um but in return we're both getting airdropped some aada and that might be a deal that people do that we could do um beforehand with real money um, as at project launch with the expectation of getting some aada return um, or you and Robin, for example. Um, so it's worth, you know, exploring some of these things. And you might see opportunity in here that's uh, interesting to you or to anybody else. I mean, maybe somebody in the IAW the network wants to jump in on it with you. Um, so you have to you have to meet this health factor of the loan to see whether it's actually going to be worthwhile for whoever's doing the the borrowing. Um, so I had to increase the amount of collateral in there, which is like the the security you put up so you know if you're going to a a, uh, a pawnbroker's you want to borrow 500 quid you're going to put in your rolexes collateral and the value of the rolex might be sixty thousand pounds and they're holding on to it so they know that if, if if the loan gets defaulted on they've still got your rolex to um to sell and can make money on that's the sort of deal that you have here so you're fully expecting to get that back as long as you can pay back the loan um, and that net provides uh, a greater than one health factor, um, which means it will be listed on the site and people can take advantage of it. So that's the summary of it. Um, I want to, I want to borrow fifty LQ tokens, uh, putting in a thousand ADA to secure that loan. Um, the interest you'd be earning if you fulfil that loan is eighty three percent. You're going to get back a maximum of ten ADA over that seven day period. Um, it will. The offer expires, so I, I don't want to take it up after the 14th. Um, 
because I know the opp opportunity is only good to me up to that date. And then I can confirm and that will get posted onto the AADA decentralized exchange once I sign that transaction. So um, can you see my my um, signing window or is that in a different window from, I think it's in a different window. Okay, let me jump, switch to that in Discord because it's useful for you to see that too. So this is a little pop-up, should be on the stream now, um, and it's from your eternal wallet, it's showing you your network you're connected to, the account that the app is requesting payment from, um, you can see further down what the condition, what's within the, um, make it a bit bigger, what's within the actual uh, transaction that you're submitting to the chain or the app is submitting to the chain so uh, so far uh, this is an unsigned transaction um, because I haven't filled this bit in here yet uh, it's got metadata attached to it it's involving smart contracts so it's not just a straight native Cardano exchange of funds this is actually a smart contract so you're sending um, tokens native tokens or ADA into a smart contract, which means it's locked up and that smart contract can do anything it wants with it. So you're trusting that the code in the smart contract is going to do what uh, it says it's going to do. Um, the, uh, the, the, the transaction details itself start to be built out. Um, so your wallet has, my wallet has a, um, unspent transaction input of 17,495. So it's going to use that part of my wallet to fulfill the transaction. Not going to use all of it and I'll get most of it back, but um, that's, this is a, this whole UTX model, which is a bit hard to get your head around. Um, then we can see um, there's a redeemer in the smart contract, which is um, effectively uh, what will execute the code within um, to fulfill the conditions of the contract, the smart contract. Um, the Redeemer has a fee, um, some steps in it, it uses a chunk of memory, and um, you know, this is all information that is relevant to a coder. But in terms of you as a person interacting with the smart contract, um, some of it will make sense, some of it won't, some of it will be useful, some of it won't. So down here we can see um, a ADA uh, as Oracle is the label that's been given to this metadata. So I now know that that's a, that's a label that will be used by my, um, the A ADA app DAP. So I can look out for that each time I'm interacting with the site. Um, uh, this is the versioning of the smart contract. And I know because I've seen an interview with this team that uh, they're able to release new um, smart contracts for the platform all the time and it will just then use newer upgraded smart contracts for subsequent loans over time um so without damaging the ones that you've set up initially so when we sign this contract now they may um uh it may go through for, be fulfilled successfully um but they want to add new features into the next one and so they'll update a smart contract that gets issued um uh, for the next time i use the app and so you are benefiting from upgrades within the app all the time without losing the value of the older ones, which is a you know, fairly unique thing and only really possible um, in, a, in um, a UTXO blockchain as opposed to Ethereum, which actually means the whole platform needs to be upgraded and all the old contracts um, become obsolete or need to be supported on a different um, code base. Um, so uh, we're looking to uh, provide so there's a collateral input, which is from my wallet. Um, we've got testnet ADA, there's a chunk of 10,000 input being used in this portion of the transaction. Uh, the output will be 8998 back to my wallet. Um, 1.4 will go as a fee to the network, I believe. And then 1,000 ADA is going into the smart contract script. Um, 
So that's the collateral that I put up on the loan side of things. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. so this is describing the full transaction that you're signing that will go on chain. Um, um, so if you're if you're seeing something, I mean, how how familiar you get with it, um, and how much how familiar you feel you need to be with that transaction uh, will vary. But remember, this is a a well this is the wild west. You're working with unproven code uh, using assets that may have real value, um, and there's no third party you can go to to. Uh, to get to complain about it after the fact. Uh, so um, effectively the developers, the AADA team are writing this code, they're submitting it to, um, um, well, they're, they're hosting it in their app, which is um, then decentralized. So it's spread out across the blockchain and their smart contracts are all um, on chain. Um, and once they've done that, they've kind of absolved themselves of the liabilities involved with it. Now, they've written a smart contract to do what they say it will, um, and they believe it works. But if there is a vulnerability in it, um, then it could it could do something unexpected. It may have unexpected behavior. Um, and this is why uh, we have third parties who audit the code before it's then put on chain and before people start using it. Um, because we need to find a way of trusting um, all the parties involved in it. So the AADA team, um, yourself, the person you're lending to or borrowing from, um, and the audit team have done their job correctly. All those entities need to be trusted. Once that is done, then you've got a secure platform that's, um, that uh, you and I can take part in without having to then trust anybody after that fact. Because um, uh, if the contract does what it says it does, um, it will lock up the assets, it will give some out in return for locking up the collateral um, and it will it will uh, take interest from what's being put up and add it on to uh, the loan amount and then it will pay out pay back the lender um, at, the, at, the, at a lot of time and um, the person who's taken the loan will have to put the asset back in again on time if all that is done all the conditions are met then everything just goes through smoothly if um, the lender the borrower doesn't give the money back then the contract is programmed and on chain to to liquidate that loan, um, so the, the lender will get the collateral and the um, initial loan amount, uh, or to compensate him for the initial loan amount that's been lost. So um, it's a really good way of then having a peer to peer lending mechanism that you don't have to trust any of the original guys. Um, that, you know, you can't turn around to them and say, "Hey, he didn't pay me," because it's, it's the conditions of what happens in that scenario are written into the smart contract, which is on chain and nobody can tamper with it once it's on chain. So whatever will be, will be. So um, this is all test net. So I'm happy just to sign that everything looks correct in terms of my understanding of what the, uh, the agreement is. Um, I'm going to jump back into my um, um, so I'm going to grab my uh, signing key for that wallet, uh, which is down here. So this is my spending passphrase for my testnet wallet. And I'm going to sign that transaction. Um, and then I'm going to jump back to the main net app uh, in my Discord share. Discord now playing. Yeah. Uh, good. So back in the app, you can see that the transaction has been successfully submitted and um, you can view it on an explorer. So this probably won't be in there yet, but let's, let's try it out. 
Yeah, so this is Cardano Scan, which is a um, very good blockchain explorer, but the transaction hasn't hit its uh, um, its query mechanism. So it, it's so the transaction is on chain, but Cardano Scan has to query and harvest all the information from the chain to then display it to you in an explorer. So it's not um, we can't quite see it yet, um, but in a couple of minutes that will update and we'll be able to explore the actual on-chain submission. So back back in the app, I'm just going to close that now and um, expect to see, here we go, it's just popped up. That's my um, my loan offer, 50LQ. Um, so it's, it's only got a 1.21 health factor, so it might be risky, so it's labeled as risky, so it might be that nobody takes that, that offer. Um, but, uh, you know, this is all just test notes, it's all just playing. Um, and you could go in and we, I could go in and withdraw, I probably can't withdraw that now, I've posted it um, until the time expires. But if nobody takes it, that's fine. I could always put up another one. Um, or, you know, if I think, oh, it's still risky. And if I do really want those LQ tokens, I'm going to put up another offer with a, with a higher um, higher collateral. So I get a better health factor and more, makes it more attractive to people. Um, and so all these offers are there. Um, and if you, as a, a holder of LQ tokens, wanted to then say, okay, I'll take that bet, you would go into the platform and uh, click the lend option. Um, and it will prompt you to, uh, to sign the transaction, taking the offer. So then you're again not interacting with any humans. Um, you're interacting with smart contracts on chain. Um, and you're saying, I'm going to hand over 50 LQ tokens for seven days. I'm going to earn 10 aid off the back of that. And I'll get my 50 LQ back again. Um, and if I don't get my 50 LQ back, uh, then this loan will be liquidated and I'll, I'll get the collateral. So I'll get a thousand ADA. So if I know I'm willing to lend 50 LQ tokens to get back um, 1,010 ADA, it seems like a, um, if I thought that was a good deal and I could confirm and take that loan. Um, and of course it goes through the same thing, it checks if you've got the uh, LQ tokens in your wallet and you can actually fulfill on these conditions. And if you do and you have, then it will, um, it will then have, both parties have signed this contract um, and it will be on chain, unchangeable, and it will play out as it plays out. So once, um, let's just check on Cardano Scan, see if it's coming up yet. Here we go. So this is the initial, the lending portion, um, the conditions that have been put up by me initially. Um, so all, everything that we were seeing in that signing screen is replicated here. So now we're seeing stuff that another third party, Cardano Scan, is queried from the blockchain to see if it verifies what we were shown in our pop-up window. Um, and these figures all match in my memory. So uh, we know it's on-chain and it's correct. We can jump in and see the the byte code for the redeemer portion of the smart contract and then the actual contract byte code. It's not readable, it's not readable and there's there's no way of decoding it uh, with Plutus, Plutus code, I don't believe. Um, again, I'm a bit, I, I haven't been involved in writing smart contracts at all, um, but I don't think you can decode from the bytecode. Uh, but you can go back to the, the policy for the contract um, here, and that will be posted um, normally on uh, a GitHub repo or or somewhere to actually go back and find the, the policy ID and read what was in that smart contract. Uh, again, that's a task I haven't done yet, so I should do that at some point, go and dig out the source code of, of, a, of a contract so I can follow my due diligence right through to the bitter end. <laughs> um, but this contract has been minted as an NFT um, on chain uh, and the metadata against it, and uh, you can see the, the label for the smart contract and the version number. And so I could probably go and find, just using those parameters, 
from the AADA website and go into their code repos and read, find out what's within that contract. Um, that's something I'd look at as well. Anyway, that's the on-chain stuff. Now I'm coming in as a lender. Let's confirm to the lend that smart contract 50LQ. Actually, don't even know if I've got 50LQ in the wallet. So this has popped up another window, which I will jump across and share with you. So this is the the um, the lender side of the contract now. Uh, they're going to send in. Now, of course, a lot of it looks the same because it's the same wallet I'm using. But I'll be sending in. Um, doing too much on this PC and starting to slow down. There we go, right at the bottom, we've got this 50 LQ tokens. Um, so it's showing up as 50 million because um, every token on Cardano can have a, a denominator. So just like you've got pence in your pounds, Ada has got um, love laces in Ada, LQ have some small denomination this in the millions, but you just talk about this as a 50 LQ. Um, and so that's going to be the uh, the input to the script. So I'll be sending in uh, 50 LQ tokens uh, into a script which has got a thousand test data in it as collateral, um, which is the understand which I understand to be the conditions of the lending agreement I'm going into. So I'm happy to sign that. Uh, and now I'll be lending and borrowing <laughs> to myself. <laughs> so share. So that's been sub successfully submitted to the blockchain. Um, we could view that portion of it on chain as well in a few minutes. Um, but that now, that LQ um, agreement has disappeared off the market um, and I see it in my dashboard and it's just been, uh, so it's now in process, so it's, I'm providing this loan, I'm also taking advantage of the loan uh, here. <laughs> So I've just peer-to-peer -peer lended to myself to test it out. And I could do could have done it with two different wallets. So I could create another uh, testnet wallet in, in uh, Eternal and loan and borrow between those two wallets if I wanted to. Um, but yeah, and the, these are two earlier um, debts that I'd set up as well when I was playing with it yesterday. So I'm sort of slowly getting to grips with how this platform plays, um, what it sort of looks like. Um, these are older transactions that have, been ha that have happened on this platform that I haven't been involved in, but um, it gives you an idea on, on the opportunities, how it works technically, and, um, and what the benefits are, and whether, you know, this is all pre-production, so I know, you know, I'm fairly confident in how it works, and I could, on launch, Maybe take take some real assets and put them on here for lending. Um, but yeah, there we go. A deep dive into a uh, a lending platform that will be launching. So, you know, this this is again a tool that's out there and being used. And depending on your money rules, on your um, the way you want to um, invest, it might be that you just see this as a a new lending platform on um, Cardano. Um, you might equate that to the success of a lending compound, a lending platform elsewhere like Compound or Aave. You could see what their token is worth by looking at. Um, don't have it open. Let's have a look at it. say Coin Market Cap. Um, 
wicked. Uh, look for. Um, have a look at Harvey. That's this is a learning platform. On another chain, um, and you can see that its token is. Uh, Currently priced at ninety-one dollars, um, and you can see the supply and market cap, the direction of travel, and then if if there's any way you know the numbers match up, you can equate that to what's available from the A8. I don't know if it's going to be on here. Oh, it is. So. You could then see um, well, the figures aren't fully here yet, um, but yeah, you can do some some maths or get Luca to do them for you <laughs> and figure out uh, what the potential is within this token. So, you know, current valuation of one point one three dollars uh, worth. Um, if you know that uh, the number of tokens that have been released you know, the current market cap and the potential market cap based on the activity of the other token, then you could extrapolate out that actually this could be a very profitable token. And in, and in fact, from one of the um, uh, videos I watched on that was a, an interview between um, the founder, the developer of AADA platform um, and uh, uh, a known uh, Peter from uh, AADA, Oz Pool, uh, who some of us have uh, staked with before uh, during the Sunday swap um, token, he he said that the tokenomics um, for the ADA token are similar to I think it was this ADA token are similar to the tokenomics for Bitcoin, for example. So you, if you're thinking about it in equivalence now in terms of a number of total tokens ever available and um, evaluation now, so this is worth $1, one point, uh, $1.13 dollars. And we know um, if you were buying into Bitcoin at $1.13 dollars, you've done very well off the back of it. So <laughs> there's no parallels and no direct correlation, but um, you can make some estimates and guesses and, and say, okay, getting hold of just 10 ADA or uh, 20 ADA, 8 ADA now at this point in its life cycle could be worth, you know, 10x, 20x, in a few years time um which then makes the risk of jumping onto their platform um with whatever you know tokens you want to provide as liquidity that might be worthwhile to you just at the opportunity of getting hold of some of um their their token at this stage now of course it may all go to zero as well that's the reality of early projects they may have a smart contract bug that gets discovered in a month's time and uh a whole load of the take the, the the loans get liquidated or something um but that's the risk you're taking in return for getting hold of some tokens and um and you can read their light paper just to see uh what they're hoping to do what their aspirations are um and how this is unique in comparison to uh, any other lending platforms um, and the benefits that are within. Now, I I took advantage of this really early days. Um, there was they were offering um, before they got any production code, before they got anything available, um, before their token had even launched. They were offering uh, members of uh, or holders of the LQ token to get onto their Discord and actually um, get hold of a, a, an NFT bond. So I actually um, have an NFT bond that says I'm owed 58 AADA tokens. Um, so I, you know, I got those for free um, just by participating in their Discord and holding another early adopter community token. Um, um, but by participating in the system, um, getting involved in projects, having a look around, and um, seeing opportunities that are dirt cheap to get in on, free, 
then you could pick up, I might have picked up something extremely valuable down the road. I've got no idea and I don't hold out an awful lot of hope, but the fact that they've seen it through from uh, uh, offering some kind of incentive right at the beginning um, and then going through the work of getting testnet apps written and launched, having those audited by a third party. Uh, the audit company is Vacuum Labs. If you want to get a bit more assurance of their um, of who of the caliber of the team that are auditing the smart contracts, um, so not the people who've written it, but they're the people who've tested it to destruction. They're all um, white hat hackers who go in and try and um, steal, rob, and destroy um, smart contract code, um, and that's their day job all day, um, in every day. That's what they love to do. Um, and then the AADA team themselves have released the um, the findings of the audit. Uh, I, I didn't make a note of that somewhere. Where did I find it? Like so much of my knowledge on these things comes from Twitter. It's embarrassing, really. But <laughs> oh, I don't want to look that long. I mean, just jump up, jump up. It is it really is. Uh, it seems you get direct access to CEOs and technical leads on teams in a way that you can't anywhere else. They're willing to just put in a comment on Twitter um, or a press release that uh, you just don't hear or see in normal everyday um, life. Uh, let me just try and find that because the outcomes of that um, audit are really valuable. Oh, I know where I saw it. It was on, it was actually on YouTube <laughs> in the notes. I might have to jump back to there. Oh, the other thing that's positive about this team is that they're offering a $25,000 bug bounty at launch. So within that 21 day period, if anybody finds a significant bug, um, then they're, they're putting up $25,000 per bug. So that's, that's how confident they are in their code. Um, that they're, you know, really playing money into audits and bug bounties. So then it gives the opportunity for every white hat hacker out there, all black hat hacker who just wants to go and try and destroy their site to go do it and get paid for the privilege. No questions asked. Um, so let me jump onto YouTube and find this audit. I think that is worth finding. Uh, what's his name? It's Lynn Canaan, isn't it? Uh, and then in the notes, this video is worth you watching um, if you are interested at all. And then um, the link through to their audit is here. Drop that into the chat as well. So I've done a full medium post on the findings. So it's all public, very open, very honest. Um, and you know, there were a series of bugs found by the audit team um, that are then reviewed, reworked, and solutions written, and the code is then sent back to the audit team to review it again to see if they can exploit the bug a second time. Um, excuse the noise. Ferocious <laughs> guard dog. <laughs> uh, yeah, so you can see there were one, two, three, four, five, six critical bugs found by the audit team. Um, but they're all subsequently been resolved. Um, so the borrower, the lender token, did not have to be an NFT. Um, so that was seen as an issue in that you could actually um, put something up for um, uh, for lending or loaning 
that was declaring itself to be an NFT that wasn't actually an NFT. That's how I understand it. Um, so that's a critical, critical bug um, and resolve because someone then effectively could create what looked like an NFT but actually was an NFT. You know, you know the multiple, multiple ones of it, identical ones of it out there. That's effectively what an ADA is. Um, an NFT should be a unique thing in the world. Um, so someone could duplicate, could actually put uh, what they're declaring to be an NFT, but actually isn't up for um, borrowing or lending. Um, so that was found and solved. And these are the sort of things that you don't, you know, I personally or you wouldn't actually think of um, testing this drawing, but a hacker, that's what he thinks about day in, day out. So that's the exploits he's trying to, to use. Can I trick the system into giving me money that's not mine? Um, the collateral could be double satisfied so that you could potentially get out twice the amount of collateral. Uh, like we, likewise with the loan, you could actually get t double the amount of loan out of it by some by some hack that they managed to devise. Um, you could apply a, a denial of service attack on the um, the dates around redeeming that loan. Um, so they were then, code was written to mitigate against, so denial of service basically means you flood the server on a particular date because you know something critical has got to happen and if it doesn't happen by that date then the loan gets liquidated so you know people could attack it that way um and uh, yeah and there's this this list of all the, the the things that we're checking for all the things that they found and what state they're in so some of these are still pending so there was duplicated logic but it was purely information so you might get an, uh, an error message out twice or something and that's noted as a bug but there's no exploit available for it and it hasn't been fixed by the team yet um, at this point on, in the audit. Um, so that's the state of play. Um, and, you know, like that medium, incomplete documentation. So again, that's not going to factor into the actual running of the application itself. But everything, you know, that's code based has actually been resolved. Um, so they're happy for the platform to go live. Um, and of course, these will be refined and worked on over time. But uh, yeah, this sort of deep dive research is is what people will be doing, hopefully within the ScatDAO community. So we'll have um, quick links out to the sorts of documents and, and things, um, and uh, and then you'll be making a, uh, you know an informed decision as to whether just to actually make use of the platform yourself, or maybe just to try and outright buy some of the AA tokens because you think they're going to be valuable over time, and. Um, and again, that you know, that's a legitimate investment. Sydney, we know that the platform is launching. We've tried out the testnet app them ourselves. Um, we think the team look good. The fact that they're offering bug bounties and they've paid us external audit team to review the code. It's the first of its kind launching on Cardano. Although there is a there is a fluid tokens platform that actually does lending and borrowing of tokens as well. Um, but I haven't actually looked massively into that. Um, that might be another one to do some, some looking into. So I think they've got a, a mainnet app. I might be wrong on that. Maybe it's just a test that one. Interesting. That looks kind of mainnet. -it. It's not mentioning testnet at all. So this, this is another landing platform that you could perhaps have a look at. Oh, the screen's been black. Why does it do this to me every now and then? You're still seeing things, or is it, is it just me? Okay. <laughs> I'm going to have to unplug my second monitor just to see if that fixes my display issue. It's worked in the past. You might lose a share. Maybe not. Brand, yeah, you're back. Um, cool. So yes, this is another lending platform that it's worth doing some research on. Um, I think this may even have launched earlier, but uh, the one that I've done most of my research on has been this AADA platform, which is launching on the thirteenth. And I know that they've got this airdrop token going as well. Um, so that's one I've I've uh, been fascinated by. But flu token is definitely worth a look as well. I've got some catalyst proposals into, um, but yeah, uh, I got min swap. You could actually just um, see if you could 
buy some a ADA tokens if you just want to buy the shovel and not the uh, take advantage of the whole rise in value of that project and the token rather than so 100 ADA would get me 44 a ADA tokens so I've actually know that I've got a, an NFT bond that's saying they'll pay me 58.3 uh, ADA tokens when I redeem it which is redeemable on the 10th of October, I think. So that'll get me a little experiment here. Mm -hmm. Yes, sorry, yes. Correct, I was just looking at the pricing, but yes, you would go over to the trade Look at the AA token um, and just see. So, if I know I want to buy 58.38 ADA tokens, then it'll cost me 130 ADA to do it. And so, I know that the airdrop that I got is worth 130 ADA now, which is news to me, very exciting. <laughs> but you know, you'd be buying into A ADA with the expectation that it would increase in value from what you're spending on it now. Um, because this is the value of their token, even before they've had any main net, uh, any application that runs online. Um, so you'd hope it would go up from here. Um, uh, and so it, you might think, okay, it's pre-launch, let's buy some now and just see what happens. And that's a, another investment strategy you could, you could take for it. Cool. Uh, you do, yes, so um, any exchange, decentralized or centralized, will charge some kind of fee because they need to run infrastructure. Uh, um, in case of a decentralized exchange, the um, they're not you're not paying anybody to run the infrastructure. The infrastructure is the blockchain itself. Um, but the um, the uh, the team behind it may be taking some money off that they're then using to fund develop under the uh, you know, bug fixes and so on and so forth. So you, there are fees involved, but they're, I mean, they're so cheap. It's uh, it's crazy, really. So for, from me spending, um, hundred thirty ADA. You know, oh, sorry. So I've done it as a sale. So if I'm selling a fifty-eight point three ADA, um, the I would be getting one hundred and thirty at the more current market rate. Um, but to the platform, I would pay, um. 2.17 and uh, no, 4.1749 uh, I don't know if the deposit that comes back a lot so yeah it's just two point oh it says here no it doesn't uh, yeah so it'll be 2.179 um, in fees so for me to the privilege of me being able to sell my ADA my A ADA sorry in return for ADA I'm just going to pay to Ada um, for that privilege, which is which is fine considering Ada is currently worth forty p or something. Um, but yeah, these are all little fees in comparison to Ethernet, Ethereum's, you know, five dollars minimum really um, at the moment in gas fees. But yes, you do consider your fees in amongst all your trades as well. Cool. So um, just covering a couple of those dates. I've spoken for quite a while now, but um, the uh, I think I think yeah. Actually, I'll share this with you if I can screen share that. Um, I've started collating. Uh, projects that I've talked about and important dates that are coming up so in case any of you guys have jumped in on it as well um, you'll be as aware as I am of what's around and what's happening when um, oh, it's not going to let me share that why not I guess it's not uh... okay let me stay sharing this one if I take this Sorry, I'm 
sharing something important that the restrictions of my browser are giving these. There we go. You seeing that now? Cool. So this is my stuff from all the native tokens that I've picked up um, over time. Uh, so, and these are important dates that I've found out from research of stuff coming up. So, uh, the next important date for me is on the 12th of September, um, which is Monday. Uh, Genius X, the Genius Yield team, went on to launch their Genius X um, platform, an incubator for tech teams building on Cardano. Um, and they uh, had an ISPO running for that. So my, I, I had put stuff in, put some ADA 500, I think, into the Genius Yield ISPO, and then it rolled over into the Genius X ISPO um, for a period of time. So that ends on the 12th of September. Um, and then actually they've started another ISPO, which will, re which will give you uh, multiple tokens from the teams that have been um, that have gone through their incubator platform so uh, uh, I might just leave it in there I'm gonna have a look at the tokens that you'll be getting in that multiple token ISPO just to see if any of them I think are worth something um, in which case just leaving my you know foregoing my ADA rewards which I'd be getting from fluid pool um, and getting um, some of these native tokens instead as reward is interesting to me and it keeps me engaged and lets me know about these these various projects in and out there and they maybe were something in some day so you know I might just leave that in there ticking along redeeming whatever Genius Shield offers um, over time but I know that on the 12th it's changing so I could go in there and have a look at what the redemption um, uh, procedure is for my Genius X tokens um, Saying that, I know that the Genius Yield conditions were told to me previously. So that's these GENS tokens. And that's got an important date coming up on the 1st of January, um, which is that they'll airdrop me the ISPO tokens. So I'll be getting hold of some allocation of Genius Yield um, token from my initial SPO I was involved in. And then I'll find out the dates of when I'll be airdropped my second lot Genius X tokens. Um, and I'll go and research that on the 12th. On Monday, on Tuesday then, we've got this AADA platform launch. The DAP will be launching. Um, so if I was going to participate in that lending platform just to see if I can put some of my assets up for loan or borrow something interesting for a while, um, then I can look at that on the 13th. Um, uh, and I know that they've got an airdrop within that project. So um, actually, can I find that conditions of that airdrop? Mm. I think I can't find it now, but um, the conditions of that airdrop were pretty light um, but it looked like you could get 10 or 20 a ADA tokens out the back of the airdrop um, so from memory if you participate in that loan lending platform on either end of it borrowing or lending within the first 21 days of launch mainnet launch um, and somebody else takes part of that lending loaning lending borrowing pairing um, and uh, that contract plays out then you will be airdropped um, a portion of the ADA tokens um, based on how much you did. So I think if you put up like a 500 ADA value, then you get 10 ADA, um, ADA tokens airdropped. And if you did 1,000 ADA value, then you'd get airdropped 20 ADA tokens. So that could be a way of just getting hold of 20 ADA tokens, which we know even today are worth... Um, 44 ADA um, and you know this is an asset that you expect to grow in value considerably so it might it might 10x from here who knows um, in which case it's something to be worth 440 ADA uh, which is you know not bad earnings for free um, uh, so yeah that was the dates I was sharing wasn't it uh, back to those 
and then on the 19th, which is uh, the following Monday, um, I know because I participated in the Genius Yield ISPO, I can go and redeem my NFT. They're offering an NFT um, a, a minting process, which if you hold one of the NFTs that you mint, will give you a, a percentage benefit on their platform which are launching so genius yield is launching a a DeFi um, exchange and liquidity and yield and all that sort of stuff and their their yield platform has a, a mechanism for diminishing or removing impermanent loss so it would be a fairly safe way to get into yield farming um, and they'll offer if you hold one of these nfts then you'll get a preferential rate on that yield farm so uh, because I participated in the ISPO for a certain period of time, I get um, onto a whitelist to actually mint one of their NFTs. Um, it will cost me 70 ADA to get one of the NFTs, but I think that the secondary market price for those um, NFTs could be higher because it's an actual utility NFT. Um, whoever holds it can get um, better um, yield return on that platform. So, you know, it's worth something to me personally if I hold that NFT because I could take part in yield farming and get a, a percentage benefit or I could sell the NFT itself um, and get paid whatever anybody else thinks is worth it's worth to them um, down the road. So like in two years time, Genius Yield is the largest DEX on Cardano um, and it's offering a 10% improvement over the yield farming for any of the stuff on there. That could be worth a whale a lot. You know, if they're, if they're a heavy yield farmer, they're putting in a million dollars worth into yield farming regularly for them to get an additional you know, percentage on top of their yield. They could be willing to pay out a fortune for that NFT. So, you know, or it might be worth nothing ever and I'll just lose 70 ADA. But <laughs> these are sort of the opportunities that are out there and you can choose to participate in. Um, so that's an, another important date for me coming up this month. Um, but yeah, so I'll I'll probably I'll try and maintain this and keep dropping these hints and um, you know things, uh, bits of of stuff that you can go and research for yourself and opportunities that we've taken part in. And if you've got any as well that you've taken part in that you know important dates are coming up, it'd be really good to to share them with us. We can um, start to gather our knowledge as a community and take advantage. That's it. Right, okay. The yeah, the the next funding round. Yeah, I don't know. How much how much clap did we buy? Did you buy? <laughs> So yeah, worth 30 ADA at the moment. Um, but again, you know, prices go up, prices go down. The market is thoroughly depressed at the moment. Um, activities dropped right off in terms of um, people playing in the ecosystem. We've just had a, a, a three week delay in Catalyst itself. Um, so all the ADA that would normally flow out from that is being pushed back three weeks plus a two week gap. So that's really like six weeks worth probably of, delay so and we're you know bottom of a of a macro bear market um so the value now uh is going to be low whatever in, in anything that we were involved in you know a month three months six months ago uh, certainly a year ago when we were at the peak um but you know in another year's time or two years time we might be back up to all-time highs and climbing again in which case even clap will rise to glorious heights so <laughs> it's you know with with you know these er, these early high risk um strategies um they'll either disappear to nothing and you're taking that gamble to begin with um or you could 
hold on to them just you know you're still you're still retaining the asset you're still holding clap um even if it drops away to to you know, only be worth two ada in two years time that could all completely change and it might have got your money back or more out again so um you know never put in more than you're willing to throw away but it's worth throwing something at it something will stick at some point all will be very happy <laughs> And you know these the airdrops that come from holding stuff like this can be worth buy in themselves. Uh, can be worth a. Yeah. Hmm. Potentially, yeah, but um, it depends on whether you're, if you're a liquidity pool, yield farm versus just staking. Because if if um, they offer a staking mechanism, then typically they're just giving you um, more of the same token for holding that token. So, um, like, uh, I was involved in... Uh, world mobile so i got some world mobile token and um i bought that token initially uh and they they had their own sort of vault their own dashboard and so i left it in there and staked it in there and no, no hang on that wasn't wmt that was that was meld yes yeah, so the meld token you can actually offer offer staking so um I staked it with them and just by holding the meld with them, I put it into a six month um, staking contract. So I don't have access to it, to that meld. I can't sell it, but it wasn't worth much to me anyway. Um, but by 16th of December, then I've got an additional 77 meld um, out of it. So um, the token's not worth much at the moment because they're not building um, and launching stuff fast at all um but i've increased my holdings just by holding and so you know staking typically is a very safe thing to get involved in just like ada um staking um but yeah in terms of airdrops it's it's luck of the draw <laughs> as far as i can see uh just by being aware of project by maybe getting into their discord you can experience some airdrops so um i I saw something on Twitter about the LQ token, which was, um, you know, a project catalyst funded um, dev, dev team, part of the Plutus Pioneers program. Um, and so they had a decent following on social media. I uh, jumped, found my way through to their Discord server, um, found out they had really good um, community ethos. They were building stuff open sourcing everything um, um, and being extremely generous with the community and they airdropped 190 you know just just for being on their discord server before a certain point in time they airdropped 190 lq tokens um which at their peak was worth something like like at the top of the of the bull market um the equivalent value in in pounds was like Fourteen thousand pounds or something, I think, um, which is just insane to me. It doesn't make it doesn't make any sense, <laughs> you know, in terms of my expectation out of life. Um, and I've held on to them, and they've dropped in value, so it's about worth four thousand or something now. But I've still been given four thousand for free, and if I hold them for longer, they might go back up again. Um, and that's for me just joining a Discord server. Uh, but you know, I completely lucked into that. Um, saying that, on the back of that, by holding LQ tokens. Other community projects that have got a similar generous mind um, have airdropped on the back of anybody who's holding an LQ token. So I managed to get hold of some, um, and that in fact was the AADA um, uh, NFT bond that would give me 58 AADA tokens. Um, I was able to take advantage of that just because I had participated in the LQ environment. And so I was a holder of LQ and they let me then participate in their airdrop. And so I got 58, 58 AADA tokens airdropped to me from that. So 
Sometimes it's just about participating and being involved and the airdrops come about. Um, but yeah, there is no hard and fast rule for getting hold of any of these. It's just being about um, you know, listening on the wind. And that's why being part of communities like this and uh, spending an hour on Twitter a day <laughs> can pay off. It's a weird way to spend your time in, in, in investment terms, but uh, you know, it can all come, to, come good for you. So certainly anything that I see get a sniff of, I'll try and share with you. Um, and the the stuff, you know, the stuff that I think are, are most com I'm most confident about, I drop into the stakers only. So delegators to the pool get first dibs on my my access to knowledge. But um, yeah, hopefully some of these dates will start um, yielding results for you guys as well. But yeah, it's a fun space, that's for sure. Good. Well, uh, there were a few other things I could talk about, but I think that's plenty of time today. Um, and uh, any anything comes up in your mind after this fact, after the fact, just drop it into the, the Discord server, and um, and I'll jump on it and answer during the, during the week. But yeah, thanks for joining again. I'll get this up on YouTube so that people can share it. Assuming I've got my recording stuff sorted. And, uh, we'll catch up again next week. All right. Cheers, Paul. Cheers, Robin. All right. Bye-bye.